What's going on growers? It's James Prigioni coming to you live from Jersey. Right now I'm in the seven year old food forest and some of you watching, you might think that's the only thing we have growing on in this property. But actually there's a lot more. Today, I wanted to bring you along for more of a full property tour and surprise you with some of the stuff we have growing. Let's go. One thing I try to emphasize is that you don't need a lot of space to grow a good amount of food. In the section I'm in right now, in the new food forest, you can see, it's not a lot of space in just a small area. We've got it packed in. The brassicas are doing real well. We've got cauliflower, cabbage, a number of different kinds of kale just excelling nicely along. With the wood chips on top as a good mulch to hold in the moisture and to bring in the worms and everything. And you can see we've also got tomatoes. They're excelling nicely, peppers, and young fruit trees. So like I said, a lot of different things in one space, but we've also got perennials mixed in with the annuals. So we're looking towards the future. Not everything is doing perfect though. You can see this broccoli headed up a little early. This is an heirloom variety, so it should shoot out more side shoots, but still good to eat fresh. Broccoli like this, homegrown, there's no way you need to cook it. So juicy, so tender. And let me show you some more stuff. One of my favorite things about growing food like this naturally, as organic as I possibly could, is I can just come out, eat it like that. I could even share it with Tuck and stuff. Tuck loves broccoli. Tuck, you want a piece, boy? He loves broccoli, snacking on it and eating it. He enjoys the garden just as much as I do. So do the birds, so do the bees. And right here, we've got a young peach tree we just put in this year. If you guys look back in the videos, I pruned this thing pretty heavy like I did the other peach trees. And the reason I do that is because I want to encourage a lot of root growth. And the peach tree is excelling along nicely. Right here, we've got more tomatoes. We squeeze these in everywhere we can. And you can see, they're looking healthy. And once the weather changes, once we start getting some real hot weather, they'll, they'll do excellent. Next to the tomatoes, you've got to put basil in because, come on, tomato and basil, classic. And we've also got a number of uh, grapes that are doing real well. And they're growing all along the fence line, so this place will be wrapped in grapes along the fence line. Till then, we've got cucumbers planted in here. They haven't come up yet, but we've got the cucumbers planted. And you guys came along. When we put this food forest in, we put these strawberries in. Look how well they're doing just beautifully. And these are from Bear Root. I highly suggest you guys order your Bear Root strawberries. Get the right variety, get them Bear Root, and you won't be upset. I've seen a number of people order Bear Root. They told me they did, and they showed me the roots. It's definitely the way to go. There's one thing I want to tell you about strawberries, and I'll bring you close to show you. So when you plant new strawberries, their first set of flowers, you want to pick those off so they don't produce fruit so they spend all their time on producing those roots. Then they'll produce runners, and that's what you really want. So I know it might hurt to take those flowers off, but still, it's the most advisable and the best thing to do. The rest of the garden, you can see it's coming up slowly. It might not look like much, but that's because we have so many wood chips in here. We've got another row of strawberries there, one behind me that are doing great. I think probably all the strawberries that we put in actually are alive and they're, and they're doing real well. I've got peppers lined in here, tomatoes also. And when I'm starting a new garden like this, I like to transplant a lot because there's still sections that some of the weeds are still not completely suffocated. So I wanna make sure that I'm not having the wood chips too thick, uh, too thin in areas and the, and the weeds kind of coming through. Here's a new pear tree that's doing real well. This is an Asian one. I can't even pronounce that. Suri A. Suri -A. And the, the growth of it looks excellent. I love the shape of the leaves and everything. I'm excited for that one. Here's another pair here. You can see how much different the leaf pattern is on these two pairs. This looks like it'd probably be a European one. And this is the Highland pair. So you'll see, I'll bring you into the food forest. The, one of the things that are doing the best is our pears. They've always done real well, for, real well for us locally. So I added a number of pears, three of them into the new food forest because they're reliable and I love the flavor. But what we wanted to do was add more diversity. Let me show you some of the annuals in here too. And you can see here, I've got some annuals in. They're not doing amazing. This is a brand new area, a brand new garden that I put in. I did this with a nice wood chip mulch and some contractor's paper. Well, the contractor's paper first, then the mulch. The reason I'm showing you this is because this is something you all can do. This is very practical. It didn't take a lot of work and it didn't take a lot of money. All I did was get a free load of wood chips, put it down, and that's basically it. So anyone could do this. Don't be discouraged if you don't have a lot of space, if you don't have a lot of money to invest. Any organic matter will help build your soil. In this section here, we did things a little differently, and I'll talk about that more in the future. But we're gonna go for more of a high intensive area here with 
adding a few more things, but I don't want to give too much away. Let me take you into the seven-year-old food forest though, my baby. In the section I was just at, you're probably thinking, that's not a food forest. That doesn't look like much of anything, but it's still young, it's the first year. Where I'm at now, this is what it's gonna be like in seven years. Here's a pear tree. Like I said, the pears do well here. Look at that, beautiful fruit, looking large. And this thing's got a good amount of fruit on it. It's a decent producer. This is the Moon Glow pear, and it's a European pear. It's still getting some bites from the plum curculio, but it just seems like they don't like the pears as much. You know we're growing fruit underneath it too, because that's just, I'd call it a classic Prigioni move, to be growing fruit under fruit. And it's currants, these are the white currants. This is one we just propagated. A friend had it locally. We took a cutting from it, stuck it in, now it's growing. That's what happens when you got super fertile soil. And as you can see the trees, they haven't slowed down. They're continuing to grow the peaches, loaded with peaches this year. Looking to get a decent harvest from those. Raspberries, looking beautiful. Here's one we added just a year or two ago, the horseradish. Horseradish is fun. You could take those and add those in your salad, dice it up, give you a good flavor with the leaves. And then come October about, we'll, we'll dig up the root, harvest that, make some pickles if we still have any saved. Any cucumbers. We probably won't at that time, but. You see the raspberry jungle in the back? This is no joke, an actual raspberry jungle. It's funny when Tuck comes running here. Tuck, when Tuck comes running through here, you can't even see him. All, all, all you see is just raspberries like shaking back and forth. It almost reminds me of an old dinosaur movie or something. Let me bring you to the back corner of the food forest. Let me brave my way through this raspberry jungle. Come meet you guys over here. And one of the reasons I wanted to give you this perspective, me, you looking at me like this, is just to give you an idea on the size. Take you here with me, kind of. Right here, we've got an apricot. This one was, uh, I had high hopes for it. It has so many apricots on it, but the Cuculio went to town on this. One thing I'm noticing this year is that plant, that bug, the that passed the Cuculio, it definitely likes some trees more than others and some varieties. So I'm trying to find out which ones it likes more than others, allow those to be more of trap crops in the future, and then we'll focus on getting high production on some of the other things. Like, look at this peach tree here. Look at all the fruit on it. So this one was a good producer for us last year. We're hoping for good things again. I talk about having an open center and look how open it is. I, I mentioned in one video how Paul Gauchi talks about how you should be able to throw a cat through it. So. You could definitely throw a cat through this one. You could probably throw a few cats through it. Maybe we'll do that in a video. That's how, that's how I'll probably get a million views on YouTube, throwing cats through trees. James Prigioni, check it out, it's coming out soon. Keep your, actually hit the notification bell so, so you don't miss it, the cat video. That could be big. And this is one of my favorite sections in the food forest. As I sit here, uh, most people won't even notice we're just completely surrounded by food. We've got mint in front of us. We want to make a little tea, have a little snack, get the breath better. Cilantro here too. So good for you. Fresh green. Blackberries will be uh, ripening soon. We've got grapes growing behind me. Apples above me. So this, this is a fun place to be. One thing to note though is you don't have to have a whole food forest. You don't have to grow this dense. Just get a fruit tree in. Get two fruit trees in. Get three fruit trees in. Look at these, you could have apples in your backyard. There's no reason you can't. You could be eating strawberries off the ground. See, I haven't had any of these strawberries over here. I wonder if they've got a mint flavor being next to the mint. Nothing noticeable, but still delicious. Another rhubarb. This is one we just probably stuck in the ground for fun one year. Still growing. Uh, it's tough to actually walk through here and get work done because there's so many strawberries ready. So I'm just always going through eating them. And then as the strawberries are finishing up, the black cap raspberries, those are gonna be crazy. I'll show you those, but let me show you some of the grapes too. Now I'm hanging out underneath the grape arbor. As you can see, I'm seeing a lot of flowers opening up. Soon we should have some small grapes on them. Left here, this is a Niagara. Right here, this is a Catawba. And then we also have another uh, Concord down at the end there. There's plenty of things at the floor level. So this is a forest. It's got multiple layers of plants growing. Seven layers basically is what we try to follow. We've got lettuce coming up, more different kind of mint, yarrow, which is a great poll uh, pollinator and great beneficial plant. Here we've got just lamb's quarters, which is wild spinach. Something that just comes up as a weed, but we allow it to grow because it is a good fresh spinach. 
and it's good to eat. More raspberries. And we've got a Honeycrisp apple here underneath a grape. The grape just got so big, the apple didn't catch up. We'll see if we get fruit on it. Here's a new cherry tree we put in, too, that grew so fast. And it's next to this nectarine. Well, this, when I bought this, it said it was a nectarine, but it's way too fuzzy to be one. So it doesn't matter, it'll be a fun surprise regardless. Underneath here, you can see a number of these plants coming up on their own. This is Borage. This is one of those that you should definitely have, a great companion. Plant next to your tomatoes. It's said to actually make the tomatoes taste better. And that's from a book, Carrots Love Tomatoes. If you're new to gardening and you're new to companion planting, check that book out. It'll give you a lot of cool ideas. That was one of my favorites when I first started gardening. Hazelnuts looking huge. In this section, these pears are great, the Asian. And these California poppy are really swelling up and getting bigger. Soon it'll be a nice mat of flowers. So as you can see, the food forest is looking great. We're gonna get good harvest from it. And it's truly gone full perennial. I can't even squeeze that many annuals in anymore. In sections that I'm trying to squeeze them in, like right here, I'm squeezing tomatoes in, stuff's already growing over it. But I'll pull some of these, uh, some of these asparagus off to the side just to let the tomato come through. Let me bring it to the side garden now. We've still got more growing. To give you guys an idea on the layout, I'm gonna walk out over to the side garden from here. Every, everywhere we can though, we stick tomatoes and stuff in. Here's a tomato that looks like a soldaki or a brandy wine. Look, you can see we call these the potato leaf tomatoes because the leaves look like potato leaves. A little yellowing, but that'll turn right around as it sets its roots in and the, and the weather changes. Maybe a little nitrogen deficient, but I don't think so because my soil right there, that's prime. That's good stuff. It just has to set in. Back here, we've got the, the beast gooseberry. And a lot of these cups are stuff that I just, I'm getting in as much as I can basically when I have time. And here this gooseberry is loaded, completely loaded. As the strawberries are finishing, we'll be just snacking on all these gooseberries, which is a lot of fun. That's a different kind of fruit you guys should grow. They are a little tart, but they're different, which is fun. Here's an Akani apple. This one we just put in recently, doing excellent. This section back here, I'm still working on it. I'm gonna actually pull some of this dirt out and then wood chip here. But until I have that, I'm still growing things. I've got tomato here, another tomato back here. We've got a grape growing along the fence line. Here's one I haven't shown before. Here's an aronia. So you guys probably haven't heard of an aronia before, but we have aronia fruit. So we'll probably be coming out with a video for that. It'd be really cool. And a borage underneath it, great companion. You could probably hear Tuck. So he loves go crazy on, going crazy on squirrels. If he's not in the garden, he's squirrel hunting. So he does keep some of them out of the garden, which is nice. Here we've got a beautiful, look in the foliage on this thing. What a beautiful looking tree. This is a thundercloud. So this will, will produce small plums and more of a reliable plum. I've seen them produce locally without any sprays or any help or anything. This is a New Jersey beach plum, more native to our local environment. So should be reliable, should do well. This is a plum tree that I'm not really looking for fruit for. This one I kind of have in more as a trap crop because it's kind of like the Santa Rosa. The Santa Rosa, the Curculio just love these plums. So I'm kind of use those as a trap crop in the future. Going through here, step into the side garden. As you can see, I'm slowly working towards it, but you'll have a progression from the side garden all the way into the new food forest. So it'll be like a whole wraparound of the whole garden all one area, which will tie the whole thing in together. One thing you're probably wondering is how big is the property? Overall, I'm on about one third of an acre and I'd say I'm gardening on about a third of that. Previously in the beginning of the video, I showed you that section where I had new strawberries planted. This is what that's gonna look like in the future. Loaded with strawberries. These are ever bearing. These are delicious. And we got some monsters in here, so good. And I don't know if you've heard of melon belly before where you have so much uh, melon and actually hurts your stomach. This is strawberry belly. Even better, when you just eat so many strawberries, you literally get a stomach ache. It's like food and a drink in one. So good. Here is a red fleshed apple. And one thing I didn't realize when I got it is how beautiful the foliage was gonna be. I'm happy I put it on the side and almost in the front yard. The color is stunning. The fruit is amazing, the color of it, and it's got bit by the curculio too. We'll see if we can get it 
uh, to harvesting point, but in the future, it's gonna be a great one. I showed you this blueberry recently. This thing is just out of control. Uh, it's obviously a great year for berries. Uh, the strawberries, the mountain there, I'll have to give you a quick like zoom by of how many ripe strawberries we have and soon to be how many ripe blueberries. So this one plant, if you buy a blueberry plant, say you spent $25 on this blueberry, $30, one harvest, this would easily pay it off. Locally, locally to me, the blueberries are like $4 for a little pack. That's not even the organic ones. Woo. Whoops, almost fell over some blueberries there. Right here, we've got another blueberry plant, and this one is looking great also. Smaller berries, but still looking very healthy. And we've got some different kinds of berries as well. We're not just growing the standards. I didn't show you gooseberries, I showed you aronias. But we've also got marion berries and tay berries. I've never had them before, but we're gonna try them from this year. Over here, we've also got a service berry, which is a little different. If I re would relate it to anything, it'd definitely be a blueberry, but more of like a tea flavor. I'll show you those as we're harvesting them. This section on the side, we've specialized this in berry production, all different kinds of berries. The main food forest, that's more in a perennial fruit tree production and in general, I guess, diversity. But this section is definitely geared towards berry production with different varieties of gooseberries here. And this gooseberry I have in the back, loaded. If you wanna see, this is, I guess, a great small picture of what this area emphasizes. We've got so many gooseberries on this plant right here, loaded. We've got uh, blueberries all over this one. And in the back, I would call this a sea of black cap raspberries. The amount of black cap raspberries in here is incredible. The reason there's so many is the way we prune them. If you prune it the correct way, you're gonna actually get the most fruit. Makes sense. In the midst of all the black cap raspberries, we've got an Asian pear. It's got a lot of fruit on it. But even though I've gotten a lot of fruit, that's not really the right way to grow them. I should have them in a row. I should have them trellised up because I'm gonna have to go through and pull a lot of those out. They're just taking up too much space and suffocating some of my other plants. Here we've got some more tomatoes planted. Wherever there's space, I stick them in. You saw I still have more to plant. I'll continue to put them in anytime I have. And let me take you back into the food forest. Recently I had a comment and it said, James, I remember three years ago when you planted that tree. And I was thinking to myself, I should get a tree in. I don't wanna wait three years though. There's no way I'm gonna harvest it. But now it's three years later and I wish I had it in. So I wanna encourage you guys, if there's something you wanna get in, get it in today, get it in now. Three years goes fast. And I wanna also let you know that don't worry about it if you've missed some time. A lot of people overestimate what they can do in one year, but they underestimate what they can do in five or seven years. So five or seven years, you could have a food forest. One year, don't overcrowd yourself too much. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share with your friends, and check us out on Steemit. Let me let the dogs in. James Prigioni is out.